Hello, welcome back. This is chapter six, relevant information for special decisions. And this is uh, quite a bit different than what we've been talking about so far. We're kind of going back into some information we saw from the past. We'll talk about period and product costs. And we're going to start to categorize some more costs into some new words. Maybe you've seen this before, opportunity, sunk. And we're going to use our knowledge of this terminology to make things like special order decisions. Should we take a special order from a customer? Outsourcing, should we make it or should we buy it from somewhere else? And something called segment elimination, where we are going to look at segments or divisions of a business and decide which ones are profitable and which ones are not. So to kick us off, let's assume here that we're going to go have some coffee together. Would you like to talk over some coffee? And so how are we going to decide if we should go to Starbucks and meet or if we're just going to meet at home or friends and we're just going to sit on the couch and brew some coffee at home? Well, you might say, OK, well, you know what? I really don't want to go to Starbucks and I don't want to spend. You go to Starbucks, you buy a typical coffee, like six, seven dollars just for a coffee. I don't want to spend six dollars at Starbucks. That would be the cost of just a basic coffee. Although if you did brew at home, you still have to pay some things. You're still going to have to pay for your coffee grounds and you're still going to have to spend money for the filters and water and some nominal things, but maybe you'll spend a dollar on all those things. So it's definitely different when it comes to cost. If we're going to go to Starbucks, we're going to end up spending $6 home brew. It's not much. It's like a dollar, maybe less than that. But if there is a difference there in cost, now, also, if you're going to go to Starbucks, you're going to have to spend gas. So maybe we live outside of town and we have to go spend the gas to get there. And so maybe you're thinking, oh, I'm going to have to travel 30 miles and pay two gallons of gas. I'm going to spend $5 in gas for at home. You don't have to spend anything. So there's no gas involved there. So as we're deciding whether to do one thing or another, we've got to kind of isolate what things are important to us and which ones aren't. So the first thing we need to know is what is relevant information. Relevant information is going to be stuff that is different between our alternatives. So information that is relevant to us differs for one or more of the alternatives. And you're going to hear me say that a lot. Really what I mean here by alternatives is just our options. So if we have two options here, what's important to us is the information that's different and things that could be avoided. So if we just stay home and, and I brew some coffee, come over, you hang out on my couch, we're avoiding $11 in costs, right? If we go to Starbucks, of course, we're spending $11. We're avoiding that $1 of nominal little things at home we have to spend money on. But you're looking at things that can be avoided if you choose one thing or the other. So things that are relevant to us are different between our options and are things that we can avoid. They are avoidable between alternatives. So again, what I mean by that is if you choose one option or the other, you can avoid those costs or revenue. So avoidable by choosing another option. All right, now when we're looking at this stuff too, things that are avoidable, we're gonna be focusing on things in the future. We have not spent money on these things yet. We're gonna come down here in a second and talk about irrelevant information and I'll give you an example right now. What if you already have a coffee maker at home? So it doesn't matter if you went to Starbucks or you stayed home, you still owned the coffee maker. So if you already own it, either way, it doesn't matter which one you choose, go to Starbucks today or come over to my house, we sit on the couch drink coffee. I still own the coffee maker. Now that's not something that's going to differ between my options here. I still own it. So this is something that we were having purchased in the past. It is not something that is a forward look into the future. It's not a future oriented thing. What happens in the past stays in the past. So these are all things that are going to be future oriented. Now, as we talk about relevant information too, we're going to come to things that have to do with opportunity costs. Maybe you've heard of that before in your um, economics class or intro to business class and opportunity costs are those sacrifices that you're going to have to give up to choose one option over the other. So when you hear the word opportunity costs, think of the sacrifice or the things that you're giving up, the sacrifice incurred, incurred in order to obtain an alternative 
opportunity. So what are you sacrificing? What are you giving up to take one op option or alternative over the other? And this is relevant. So as we go through our examples and do problems, this is a relevant thing that we have to consider, even though sometimes it's not quantitative. Sometimes Sorry, it cut out on me. Okay, so sometimes our relevant information is not uh, quantitative. It's not a numerical amount. So even though we're going to deal a lot with numbers and it comes to like the cost to us, sometimes we've got to consider things like time or quality to production. Um, there's things that are relevant to us that are not necessarily quantitative or qualitative. So sorry again, I had cut out on that. Um, some things related to our example here, going to get coffee at Starbucks. If we decide to drive to Starbucks and say we live out in Smith's Grove and we've got a 30 minute drive to town to um, Bowling Green or whatnot, we're going to meet each other there. We're giving up 30 minutes of our time just because we have to drive. But on the flip side of that, you know, you come to my house, we sit on the couch. Well, hey, you know, you're giving up, or I'm giving up, if I'm staying home, the opportunity to get out and get some fresh air and see people and be out and, um, you know, get, go for a drive. Those are not things that you can put a, a dollar amount to, but they are things that you're giving up things to consider, and they are relevant. They are relevant when you make your decisions um, upon these things. All right, so now we're going to talk about the irrelevant information, and I gave you an example a second ago when I talked about the coffee maker. Either way, if we go to Starbucks or you come over to my house and I brew some coffee, I already own a coffee maker. Irrelevant information is going to be the same no matter what option we choose. They don't differ between alternatives. Irrelevant information does not differ between alternatives. Again, you're going to hear that over and over again. That just means options, alternatives, alternatives. A in there somewhere. All right. Does not differ between alternatives. And so our coffee maker, you know, I have a coffee maker no matter what. I already owned it. So that is not going to make a difference when it comes to our decision, where we're going to go, what we're going to do. We're going to ignore it completely. What happens in the past stays in the past. Um, we're only going to be thinking about things in the future. And so you, you could also say things like our coffee mugs. We we'll already have a coffee mug. So why? It doesn't matter. Um, some other things. Let's see here manager salary. Okay, so let's talk about this. It doesn't matter if you go to Starbucks or you stay home. The manager of Starbucks is still getting paid, right? So it does not differ between all terms. That shouldn't make a, a decision matter in your case. Is it sunny? Okay, so that might matter if you're getting in the car or not, but it doesn't matter which you choose. It's always going to be sunny. Um, let's do another one here. Let's say um, you, you already own a car. You already own a car. So maybe, yeah, you're going to drive and put some wear on it, but you already have a car, so it doesn't matter. You don't have to go buy a car for either one of those options. They do not differ between our alternatives. What happens in the past just stays in the past. Um, and if they are the same, no matter what you choose, we're just going to ignore it. Some costs are also Part of our irrelevant information. Those are things that happen in the past. Relevant information because it's stuff that's happened in the past and it should not be considered at all in our current decision making. So some costs are costs that happened in the past. Irrelevant information happened in the past. Not considered. All right, so things that happened in the past does not matter. Uh, let's say you went to Starbucks a week ago. Okay, so you went to Starbucks a week ago. That's great. That happened in the past. Went, went to Starbucks a week ago. My husband always says to me, I don't want to have tacos or whatever for dinner because I had that for lunch. I don't want pizza. I had pizza for lunch. And I'm like, well, that doesn't matter. I mean, that's that happened earlier today. That's a sunk cost. That doesn't matter. You went to Starbucks a week ago. Why does that matter? We're talking about today. Okay, so we're going to ignore things that happened in the past. All right, so Carlson Company is considering replacing equipment that has a current book value of $600,000. And new equipment costs $500,000. The old equipment can be sold for $400,000. Hmm, what is the sunk cost in this situation? Carlson wants to buy some new equipment, has a current book value. Let me remind you too what a book value is. Our book value is the difference between the original cost and what has accumulated in depreciation. 
This is an amount that is listed, depreciation, sorry. This is an amount that is listed on the balance sheet that a business will carry for the piece of equipment. It is just an amount that they, it's a calculation, doesn't really mean anything as far as what the real value is right now. It's just the value that they hold as an asset on their balance sheet. New equipment costs $500,000. Okay, so if they wanna buy something new, this is what they're gonna to have to pay. And the old equipment, the one that they have listed on their balance sheet, is really only worth 400000 So they can put out a marketplace wherever, and that's what they're going to get. So what is the sunk cost in this situation? What is not relevant? What is irrelevant to this situation in deciding to get a new piece of equipment? Well, it's definitely important to know how much it's going to cost. So we need to know that. And it's going to be really important to know that we could get a cash inflow of $400,000. What doesn't matter in this situation? It doesn't matter that they have a current value of 600000 The current book value is a sunk cost. It happened in the past. It does not make a difference in what the equipment's going to do for them in the future or how much money they're going to get for their equipment. So what is sunk in this situation? The past cost, the $600,000. That is irrelevant to us in deciding whether to buy something now or to hold on to it. Okay, it's irrelevant. It's happened in the past. ABC Manufacturing is considering producing a new product line. The company has the following options. All right, so we have option one. Use the existing machinery to produce the new product. Okay, the machinery is currently used for another product that generates a profit of $50,000 per year. So by using the piece of equipment we already have to produce the new product, we're going to have to give up the profit we already have. Option B, invest in a new machinery specifically for this new product. The new machinery would cost $100,000 and the new product is expected to generate a profit of $80,000. What is the opportunity cost of choosing the existing machine? What is the opportunity cost of using this existing machine for the new product instead of continuing to produce the current product. If we use the new machine, what are we giving up? If we choose option A and we go ahead and start using this machine, divert all the work to something else, then we are gonna give up what we already make. If we divert everything, we are gonna forego that $50,000. The profit from the current product, which would be foregone, foregone, meaning we don't get any more profit, would be $50,000. This is the opportunity cost we would lose out on. Opportunity cost of using the existing machine, option A, would mean that we would lose out on that $50,000.